Good evening. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Mr. Christie in New Jersey is the easy winner, and immediately Potomac fever makes him a major presidential candidate for 2016. In New York, Bill de Blasio wins going away over the Republican challenger to become the new mayor of New York. In Virginia, the surprise of the evening, Terry McAuliffe, longtime Clinton friend, a man who's lost the Virginia race before, his quest for the Virginia race has fallen short before, becomes Virginia's governor. However, the news is that Ken Cuccinelli, who was trailing badly in the polls this last month, hurt very badly by the shutdown, by what you could say is his inability to raise money. He was outspent 10 to 1 in television and media in Virginia, comes very close to this race. And the closeness of this race can also be explained by the controversy, turmoil, upset over the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, in these last weeks. There are many directions to explore, but I mentioned that the Obamacare story will continue after the Virginia race is resolved. We're joined now by Jillian K. Melcher from the National Review Online. She is writing about one piece of the Affordable Care Act you don't know yet, but it's part of the larger story of how the President of the United States, the Obama administration, with the signature policy of 2010, did not do very careful homework about whom they're dealing with, their, the ability of the companies they're giving contracts to to deliver on time, hence the healthcare.gov failure, the ongoing failure, and I'll speak of that later this evening. And also the contractors being rewarded again and again by the Obama administration. One in particular, it's called Serco. I know it doesn't mean anything to anybody. It's a British-based company. It has a, an outlet in Washington, D.C., a, a, a subordinate firm, Serco. It's handling paper documents for the Affordable Care Act. But within these last hours, I read from Reuters from London. Britain's serious fraud office, that's like the Justice Department investigating corruption, has opened a criminal investigation into G4S, one firm, and Serco's electronic monitoring contracts, increasing pressure on the embattled contractors. That single item is not the only problem with Serco. Jillian, a very good evening to you. Serco in Washington has long been a troubled company. What is its job? What is the Obama administration paying it more than a billion dollars to do? Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Well, Serco is a company that's being paid more than a billion dollars to manage the paper applications for the health exchanges. And you really see that that's a position that's become more important now that healthcare.gov has, has had such a rocky launch. When you send in an application on paper because you can't do it online, these are the guys who are getting it. All right, they've got this contract, and the Obama administration, knowing that they've been troubled for some time, right? This Reuters release is not the first time uh, Circo's had troubles in the news. No, absolutely not. And I kind of want to walk you through sure. the timeline on this. So in July... Um, the award for the contract, it's $1.249 million. July of 2013. July 2013, more than a billion dollars, $1.249 billion. That contract is announced. A couple of days later, news comes out in Britain that there's been an audit and that G4S and Serco have allegedly overbilled the British government by up to $80 million. That's not small change. So then a month later, news comes out that the British police in London are investigating Serco for allegedly altering performance records, making it look like they did a better job for a government contract than they actually did. September rolls around. Women come out at a Serco-run immigration detention center in Britain, claiming that they were sexually coerced by Serco guards. You've got scandal after scandal after scandal. Now, you would think the Obama administration would back away from that, but they've defended Serco. And on top of defending it, I mentioned that the contract was $1.249 billion up front. It's been increased to $1.336 billion. So they've actually gotten several million dollars more than they had before the scandals came How out. How did Serco get the contract? Do they have uh, good connections at the White House? Do they know the chef? <laughs> there's uh, there's definitely political influence going on. So in the past couple of years, they've spent more than a million dollars on lobbying and political contributions. You've got $6,000 going directly to the Obama re-election campaign. 
And I think it's interesting, too, to look at who they hired for, for to represent them. They went with this firm, Greenberg Trorig. Now, some listeners might recognize that because it's Jack Abramoff's old firm. And they end up working with a lobbyist named Mark Hayes. And he's got an interesting story, too. So he ended up, he worked on Capitol Hill as the Affordable Care Act was being considered actually was very involved in the law. I mean, his bio on his lobbying website says that he was instrumental in the passage of some parts of it. Law passes, he ends up leaving Capitol Hill, becoming a lobbyist, representing Serco, and then a couple months later finds himself under federal investigation for insider trading. This is the guy that Serco had represent them. Mark Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S. Is he still on the case or has he left it because he has to do with his lawyers? He left it, and I actually wasn't able to find out whether that investigation is still pending. But you can actually read the emails where you can see him corresponding with a, a hedge fund guy, and you see why they thought that there might be some insider trading going on. There were questions raised about Serco and these troubles. Did the Obama administration comment from July until now? Yeah, they actually they defended Serco's record. They said that it was a company with a good history in the United States and that they basically trusted it to do the job. Now, whether that's wise, I don't think so. I mean, even in the United States, you've got they managed the U.S thrift savings plan for federal employees. In 2011, um, Serco presided over a big security leak. You see 120,000 participants, social security numbers, other personal information leaked. How scary can you get? And they're handling the paper products for the Affordable Care Act, and the contract is done. And they're there's no sense that the Obama administration understands that they've got a PR problem in all areas, and this particular one could get out of hand. There's no sense then. You're not hearing. You've published this in the National Review Online. You'd, 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 it would be logical that the Obama administration or HHS or CMS would be sensitive. Have you seen any, re- any registration of the troubles? I haven't, and I think there's been a lot of media interest in this. But I'm I'm a little bit surprised that there hasn't been more of a political response to it. I mean, here you've got a company that's under numerous investigations, right. facing numerous allegations of, of sketchy behavior, and the Obama administration is pressing forward with awarding this contract. And for those of you who weren't with us during the Bush administration, I mentioned, and it's, it's tendentious on my part, but what the heck, it's my show. If the name Enron had come up in, say, 2003, 2004, I would think that that would have been a political conversation in Washington or Blackwater or any of the companies that were associated with the vice president during the Obama and uh, the Bush years. Those companies are still being castigated as winning contracts despite their troubles and nothing about this the affordable character in fact today Daryl Issa provided 75 pages of war room notes that's what they're actually called I'll discuss them later on tonight this is October 1st to October 20, uh, 30th in the White House each day the IT teams meeting to discuss the catastrophe of the website and I sent to Jillian earlier in the day a document late in the cycle, a document LMI 604, if you're following at home, that mentions Serco prominently. And Jillian, I didn't see any reg- registration, uh, any recognition by the people in the war room that they're dealing with a tainted product here. Just They're just throwing it out as, have you checked with Serco on the paper documents? No, I don't think there's been any recognition of this. Um, at least in the United States. In Britain, you've got the CEO recently resigned because of all these scandals that Serco is facing. So, and I think it's also worth mentioning, maybe this contract was given because Serco had contracts with the British National Health System, but what happened there wasn't good either. So they managed an out-of-hours general practitioner service, and there were allegations in an audit that seemed to suggest that, once again, Serco had falsified its performance records to make it look like it was doing a better job than it was doing. And then in one particularly grisly instance, parents called in, um, they had a sick kid, they said, send the kid home, put him to bed. Well, the kid ended up having a burst appendix, and after his parents didn't take him to the doctor, acting on Serco's advice, the kid died. That's not the kind of record we want. 
Serco, S-E-R-C-O. I know it's too much data to deal with now, but we're at the beginning of the investigation of the catastrophe of the Affordable Care Act. And those people in the war room, listen to me. Serco, it's a troubled company. Deal with it now because it gets worse. I'm John Batchelor. <laughs>